Hey everyone, I'm Mike Levy. We're here in a very sunny Squamish to take a look at my project bike for 2019, Giant's Trance Advanced Pro 29. So Giant has a whole bunch of different trances in their catalog. A lot of them have 27.5 inch wheels and they got 140 millimeters out back. This is less bike than those. 115 millimeters in the back, 130 up front. Now this bike, it might be what you refer to as a down country bike. I wouldn't say that personally. Some other people might, but I wouldn't. When was the last time you ever saw Giant make anything exciting and super interesting that you lusted after? I honestly can't remember a time when they did that. And then this thing showed up at our field test and I saw it and I was like, holy shit, that bike says Mike Levy. I also don't think the Giant got the credit they deserved with this bike. This bike is very, not giant in a way. First of all, it's on 29 inch wheels. Uh, in the recent past, Giant has definitely not had anything to do with 29 inch wheels. It's also a little bit forward thinking with the low travel and the slackish numbers. So up front, we're looking at a 66.5 degree head angle. Now I know that's not, you know, super enduro slack, but with 130 up front and 100, 115 mils in the back, it's the kind of number that puts this bike in the do everything category. I'm on a medium and the reach is 442, not 542, not 6,000. I think a lot of people are gonna think that's short for someone who's five foot nine. You know, I put 510 on my Bumble profile, but I'm actually five foot nine. Uh, but I don't find it short at all, and it was a conscious decision. Uh, I've, also, I've always preferred a little bit shorter, more nimble, fun bikes. So enough of me talking about geometry. Let's talk about this particular bike and what I've done to it. The obvious talking point is up front with the truss message fork. Now this trance came with DVO's very blue 130 millimeter travel sapphire that worked well. I gotta test this fork, you guys wanna know about it, so it's on the front of this bike. As of right now, I've only got a handful of rides on it with no real complaints. There's definitely something interesting going on uh, and you're gonna read all about it. So on the back of the bike, I'm still running the stock DVO Topaz rear shock. I'm still tinkering with settings. I've been putting spacers in the negative spring side to hold me up a little bit more and I've also got an extra spacer in the positive side for a little bit more bottom out resistance and I've been tinkering with air pressure, so stay tuned. So there's a lot of carbon fiber on this bike. There's a lot of black on this bike. There's one important point where I stray from that and that's the cranks. These are Cane Creek's EE wings, titanium cranks. They're really freaking light. That's not why I put them on. Just look at them, they're gorgeous! <laughs> so Synchros' Silverton SL wheels are built very differently from any other mountain bike wheel. If you look at them, the hub shell, the spokes, and the rim, they've all been bonded together and it's all carbon fiber. So there's two numbers that stand out with these things, 1,000, 250 grams and three thousand five hundred dollars american that's a lot of money for not a lot of grams we're going to see how they hold up this bike is a short travel bike and we're going to put the wheels through the ringer so there's another synchros component on this thing is the front end it has their hickson integrated handlebar and stem so this is a virtual 50 millimeter length 800 millimeter width 227 grams together 330 american I've got a set of ODI's new float grips on here. They're not lock on. They're light, they're comfortable, but they're a real bitch to put on. Personally, I think that they're worth that trouble. The other talking point here is V's factory ride tires. Now, I'm a lot of things, but one thing I'm not is a hot patch whore. I'm open-minded enough to try all these different tires that aren't Max and Schwabe, and sometimes I find something that works really, really well. This is one of those times. Now, they're heavy at around 1,100 grams, but man, have they impressed me with their traction. So stay tuned for a review. So some of the other running gear that I've got on this bike is a Fox Transfer. Now it's the new one, 475 millimeters of drop. When I'm sending it, you know, I might go to Rampage, so I need to get the seat out of the way. Now I've combined that with One Up's lever because of how it tucks up, up against the handlebar. I don't have to unwrap my thumb as much as I would with other levers, and it just plain works well. One Up lever, Fox Post, no troubles, perfect. Up front, I've got a Lazine Super GPS computer. I'm not a huge computer guy, but I like to keep track of the elevation and this does it for me. The last thing to talk about is the absolute most important component on this bike, and it's my seat bag. It's actually a tool wrap from Blackburn. 
I've got a tube and some levers, and I like it because it's got a little pocket in there. I could put my debit card in there so I could stop at Tim Hortons on the way home and get some donuts because I'm obviously bonked and destroyed, and that gets me home. So there you have it. That's my Staff Rides bike for 2019. And you know what? I haven't actually decided if I love this thing yet or if I hate it. If you look at it, it obviously looks super weird. Some angles I look at it and I'm like, that thing is gorgeous. It looks like it's from the future. Other angles I look at it and I'm like, this thing is awkward. So let me know what you think about it in the comments. And if you have any questions about how anything is working, post them down there and I'll answer them for you. Can you guys think of a name for this thing? I've come up with a few, but nothing that's appropriate, nothing I won't get fired for. So also put some name suggestions down below and we'll see if any work. Thanks guys.